Welcome to another community episode of my Observability Clinics number 13, the lucky number 13. Topic today is automatic right sizing of VMs with approval processes integrated in your DevOps tools. We had a topic, right sizing your infrastructure in an automated way, which is very important because we all want to make sure our infrastructure is large enough to handle all the load, but then also scales down in case we don't need it. And I think this is actually what Will and Danilo have prepared for us. First of all, hi guys, how are you doing, Will? Hi Andy, yeah, doing very good. Thank you. Yourself? All good. Danilo, how about you? Very well, very well. Thank you. Awesome. Hope you're doing well too. Very good, very good. Uh, it's a Friday here, as you said earlier, and it's the time of the recording. So uh, it's going to be a good weekend coming up. But before we go into the weekend, as we do the recording, Will, I think you're kicking it off. What have you prepared for us uh, in terms of the topic that we're discussing today? Yeah, thanks, Andy. So today, what we'll be talking about is how we can take the data that's already in Dynatrace and using the power of Dynatrace platform to then be able to go out and right size your hosts automatically while including that approval step that mm -hmm. is so crucial for so many organizations. Mm -hmm. So there's three steps to this process. The first is around identification. So how we can use the data that's already there in Dynatrace to go and collect CPU values or memory values to then know which machines need to be upsized or downsized depending on that number. The second is around sending that data to an approval process. So Dynatrace will automatically open that ticket and then when it's approved, that will then send back into Dynatrace to then be able to drive the next step which is for right sizing. So this involves the authentication and the update of that host to put it to the correct size that it needs to be to be able to handle an increase in work or to be making better use of the resources that you have. And all of this is being powered by the automation engine through a Dynatrace workflow. And I'll now pass this over to Danilo, who will be able to show you in a little bit more detail in the Dynatrace environment, how this will work. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Will. So let me share my screen and let's go through this. So uh, hopefully you can see this. So as you can mm -hmm. see, uh, the way we're doing this is that we're building two different workflows for the same purpose, of course. So we have the first workflow, which is calculate and create a ticket. Mm -hmm. And then we have the second workflow, which will uh, react uh, as on an event-based trigger. And it's going to downsize or upsize your host. Mm -hmm. So if I go to our first workflow, and if I run this, just to kind of show you and walk you through it. So what we're going to do is we are going to get the current CPU values of our host that we have using DQL, of course. Uh, this is our input. We are going to count the number of records that we have returned from our previous statement. And we're going to create an issue in JIRA. Depending on how many hosts uh, we have to downsize or upsize, so depending on the, num the, the count that we have right mm -hmm. here, we're either going to create one ticket or multiple tickets, right? Mm -hmm. So we have an auto move to pending right here, depending on if we have multiple hosts or one host. In this case, you can see that we just have one ticket that we're moving to pending. And we're using our Slack uh, application integration to notify our team in this case. So if I if I open our Slack, you can see that we created a new ticket with, mm -hmm. with an ID and we have our ticket URL right here. So if I open this, you will see that we have a nice little description coming from Dynatrace workflow. So we have the host ID and the current CPU value. We have the comment from Dynatrace workflow as well that we're moving the ticket to pending. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, if I go to my machine, you can see this is the current size of the machine. So D8S. Now, on this ticket, what we've done is, so if I scroll down here and I add myself as an approver right here, refresh the page, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a nice little button right here to approve this process. What happens is usually teams would have this kind of a task if they're trying to automate something, but still they would have a process mm -hmm. like a ticketing system that they need, they need to use to approve uh, an upsize or downsize in this case. Mm -hmm. So what happens is if I press on approve, this ticket will go into work in progress and it's going to send an event 
back to Dynatrace that this other workflow will react to. So if I take a look at the executions, you can see that there was the last execution eight seconds ago. And if I open this, you will see that we have a DQL query right here that's gonna grab the results. We are automating the process of obtaining the bear token. And then lastly, we are downsizing our host depending on the condition, conditions that we put for the CPU and we're closing the ticket. So if I go into Azure again and I refresh this page, you can see that the host has been downsized right here. And then if I go back to my ticket, you can see that the ticket has been marked as done. So I'm gonna pass it back to Will to quickly show you uh, all the details around the DQL uh, and around how we are uh, trying to be as dynamic as possible uh, and not hard code any values. So back to you, Will. Perfect, thank you, Taylor. So I'll just uh, bring back up the slide. And so there's a few different tips and tricks from this of how it can be applied in your environment and how you can use the data there and remain flexible and dynamic in how you create this. So first of all, there are three key areas of being dynamic that I'll take you through. And the first of these is by reacting to the event that has triggered the workflow by pulling the information from the JIRA ticket itself to then know the host and the decision whether to upsize or downsize directly from the event that triggered it. And by doing this, we can use the data area of DQL to pull this information out that we can then pass through. The second of these is, as Danilo mentioned, by automating the authentication process. So to remain secure, when we talk to Microsoft and Azure to resize the host, we need to use a bearer token. And we go and pull this information automatically to then use in the next steps when we then go to downsize or upsize that host. So this again is making sure that we're not having manual mm -hmm. steps involved in that workflow that needs someone to go in and fill them out. It's all being done automatically. The third area of this is by templating out the information of the Azure VM to make sure that none of those pieces of information are being entered. So keeping it flexible so that it can work for any VM within the environment based off of the data that we can pull back from that entity. So you can also see here, it's using the bearer token from the previous step as the authentication and then using the piece of information around the host that we're able to pull out. And the way that we can pull these out is using the power of tags. So as you can see here, we're using the DQL query to pass out those tags from the Dynatrace entity. So these are being automatically applied based off of the tag management. So these aren't manual either. Mm -hmm. So then use the upsize or the downsize change that the VM needs to go to, as well as the subscription ID and the name of the virtual machine. And all of these could then be passed out and used in that query, so nothing's being done manually or entered manually. And so there's a few of the tools that we've been talking about as we've been going through this, but they've just been examples for this particular workflow. And I'll pass back to Danilo to talk a little bit more about that. Awesome, yeah. So, so just like you mentioned, this is just an example of the flexibility and the automation we now have with the Dynatrace platform. I think it's awesome to show this example because uh, we're just doing uh, this this workflow right here based on CPU. But if you think about the other examples uh, and other tools that you can use to integrate with Dynatrace, mm -hmm. which is super important, I think I think that's a very very good piece. You know, if we talk about disk resizing or any anything else that we already capture with Dynatrace mm -hmm. that we can react to. So obviously there are multiple tools that we we can connect to. You know, if we talk about ServiceNow or if we talk about Teams, if you want to use that for your communication channels. I think that's that's super crucial to mention. And then the last piece would be, you know, talking to your cloud vendors or even talking uh, and, and working with uh, your cloud native 
um, tools that you might have. So if we talk about Kubernetes clusters, you want to resize your agent pools or something like this in your Azure Kubernetes service, for example, this, mm -hmm. this will be an option as soon as we have that API endpoint to, to, to work with. Mm -hmm. So just to sort of, uh, sort of summarize everything, um, it's just important to note that we simply accomplish this with two different workflows that we have. Uh, they, they work together. Uh, they work together because they've been tied together with, with Jira. Uh, of course, first one is an, is an on-demand trigger. So we triggered right here, but this doesn't have to be an on-demand trigger. This can be integrated uh, into our pipeline and react to an event, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and also the second workflow will be based on the event trigger that Jira sends back to Dynatrace. So yeah, uh, Andy, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to feel free to jump in. But uh, that's that's so far everything we've we've prepared. Yeah, uh, I first of all I kept quiet and I hope you saw me smiling every every step along the way and the demo, just awesome. I want to have uh, so many new ideas here, uh, but I want to highlight a couple of things. As you currently said, or as you just said, the first workflow that we see here that basically calculates is there a need to up or downsize a host. You did this on a um, on a threshold of CPU, but you mentioned you can do this on anything else. I, we can even do this combining this with our Davis forecasting capability. That means you don't even need to go through a, through a threshold, but with the Davis forecasting actions, now that I think of it, as you showed the demo, mm -hmm. you can say, I'm already predictively upscaling or downscaling yeah. as I know we are heading into that direction. I think that's that's in the, and then you just run it on a on a schedule. Maybe that every hour just checks it. I really love that you're using and you mentioned it nicely in the slides. The power of tags, so everything is metadata driven. That means on the host itself, you know in which direction you would scale up or down, what type of size you would you would scale up or down to, and then also thanks for the reminder that this works with really you know any tool uh, you use Jira. In Azure today, but this works with really any everything. Um, I'm I'm blown away. I'm really happy that you have done this, folks. If you're watching this video either on YouTube or on Dynatrace University, on the bottom of the description, we will add all the relevant links. This would be the links to the Dynatrace workflows, DQL, uh, also some other sessions we already had that I think would be very uh, useful uh, in in that regard. I think though. Thank you so much for the two of you, Will and Danilo. Uh, Thanks for having thank us. Very much. Thank yeah, you very much. And, and I'm pretty sure, I hope so, you will be back for more use cases like this. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Thanks Andy. Thanks very much, Andy.